Welcome back to Satisfactory Update 6. My name is Nilaus and I will be your guide on this Let's Play walkthrough and, well, maybe even tutorial series that we're doing here for this wonderful upgrade. And, well, today I have two things for you and I hope that we can combine them into two. I have a cool design for heavy modular frames and on top of that we also have to, uh, to talk a bit about sort of the general uh, factory design principles because it's all about when we talk about design principles for factories, I am pretty much always doing a modular design. And basically, basically you can split it into two things. First of all, you can either do a mega factory where everything is collected in one place and bring all materials in and then sort of distribute it uh, within the sort of the base. Or you can do sort of more disparate, uh, separate builds, one delivering anything, and then they communicate with each other through belts, trucks, or trains, or, robo or drones. That's also pretty cool. Uh, but that's not really what we want to talk about. It's when, because I don't like the mega base build, I'm kind of combining it here by having both mega base and also, and also some separate build. Basically having separate builds, but having them so close that they can actually interact with each other and sort of overlap a bit. Now, um, what I'd want to talk about is the idea that when we build a factory, whether you make it as a centralized production line or, yeah, let's call it centralized production lines, or if you want to make it as as a module. For example, this is a previous one where I have built it as a module. You can see there is one location here that makes uh, motors and then I built all of this to support my one with motors and then I can double it and if I wanted to I can triple, quadruple, whatever, I can build it on top here. So we are building everything into one module here. Now let's have a look from my previous series on in a, an example of the centralized production line and how that looks. Here's an example from my previous series of an example of a centralized production line. What we see here is we have a lot of stuff coming in, actually up to 12, uh, up to 1800 bauxite materials coming in, getting split out into several different locations out here and over on the other side, making all the products. And then we have this, uh, what is it called? Aluminium scrap, aluminium scrap on here. And with that, we can then take all of the aluminium scrap and move it down Stairs to the next level that's coming in here and then take the aluminium scrap and then make it into a large smelter area here that just makes it into aluminium uh, ingots and we will then ship out and use for other things on our train network. So this is an example of, uh, of a centralized build. Now the advantage of course is that well you have a massive factory looks awesome you can design the whole thing uh, at once and then sort of make something around it. Uh, the disadvantage, and I think the disadvantage is actually way bigger than uh, the advantage, is that when building this, it takes a monumental amount of time, and in the time that you take to actually build it, you have nothing to show for it. You will have nothing, um, no... Yeah, we'll have uh, none of this, and if we are... But as soon as it hooks up, you start going from zero ingots to 2,160 ingots, and I just... I just dislike that and it's it's one of those key uh, key points that I really dislike about the way that it works is that you go from having nothing to having way too much because you have to build it centralized production lines for later on because you can't really expand this one. So this is good for late game when you know exactly how much you need but when we are not in late game then this uh, design becomes a bit complicated. So let's wish on back to our old base or new base actually. And we are back in our new update six base and uh, now how do we alleviate the problem that we either have to build everything and imagine the overall design or overall consumption that we have at the end which is really difficult because we don't know how much we need at the end of the game and if we build it too much now then we spend a lot of time and effort and energy and power and construction materials on building something that we don't need for maybe the next 80 hours or if we build it too small and then we have to scale up how do we alleviate that problem well the answer is modular builds so i have built a tower that's ready for us to do some modular designs and how do we want to do that we are going to use heavy modular frames to show the idea of modularity of designs and that's exactly what we're going to do here i will take all of this out and i really like this to be at 80 percent because 80 percent is super nice uh, value here so i'm going to use these two for just uh, some testing of uh, recipes here that we are going to need and i will show you what the idea is we will have one manufacturer at each level and then we'll be creating everything that's needed to go into that manufacturer at that level. 
That means if we need more, we can get more manufacturers here. It's so tempting to just build, if we look at this, and uh, let's see, what do we have? What do we have? That one, right? Uh, this, if I scale it to 80%, it has some pretty nice numbers. Six minutes per minute, seven and a half per minute, 21 per, 27 per minute, and 16.5 minutes. So it's, it's totally manageable, these numbers. Now, what does this mean, though? Well, uh, well, they, this is a lot of things. So either I would have to make a modular frame build, a, an encased industrial beam build, and a concrete and a steel pipe build, and feed them over here. Or I could do something interesting. Now, if I do a modular build, 2.25, 2.25 is plenty for us right now. But later on, we'll probably need around 10, maybe, maybe even 15. But I don't know. That's, it's definitely not worth it for us to build 10 or 15 at this point because the amount of steel and steel industrial beams and all that would be absolutely monstrous for us to support. And there would be no value except generating tickets. So we want to build a design that uses 2.25. We're going to be happy about it. And we're going to make sure that it can be scaled up by building more. So that's the objective because that is the key point. I think the, your most precious resource in Satisfactory is your time because everything takes so goddamn long to build, then you need to prioritize what you're going to spend time on. And if you're going to spend the next 20, 30, 40 hours on building a single mo heavy module frames, you might just be tired of the game before you are actually proceeding to the next, next stage. So we don't want to do that. Let's instead do a modular build because this one has some unique properties. And the unique property is, let's remember, we have concrete and we have steel. Now, encased industrial beams, if we look at encased industrial beams, uh, beam, okay, that was probably not the best search. Encased industrial beam, and here's another little trick. You can click expand, and we can see we need 7.5, so I just write 7.5 here. I have to write some comma five, but it still works. We know we can then see how much we need to overclock one, not really relevant, but more importantly, we can see that this will, this can be built from steel pipes and concrete. Well, that means, we can, instead of making encased industrial beams, we can just get more steel pipes and more concrete in, and then on site make it into encased industrial beams. Ah, that makes it simpler. So we've now reduced it from having four inputs to having three inputs. Then let's take a look at the modular frames. Modular frame. Do we have something that uses steel as well? Yep, we have something here that uses steel beams. So let's take a look at this one. This uh, requires encased industrial beams, and I'm going to have to get four of those per minute. That's what I need for the build, isn't it? Uh, no, six, 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 six. I need six of these. That was what we designed. So six of that, that means I need 20 steel pipes. So again, we have now reduced it from having modular frames to having steel pipes that we already have, and then reinforced iron plates. All right, well, can we make it even better? We can indeed. Let's have a look at reinforced industrial Reinforced iron plates. Now, reinforced iron plates, we only need five of those, so I'm going to use the default formula since the production rate is five per minute. And if we then say I want four of this, that means I need 24 iron plates and 12 screws. Well, that's not really helping us. That means we could either take some iron inbound for this, or we could be a bit cheeky, let's be cheeky about it, and actually use this recipe here. This is going to be 45. I only need 24. So that means I need four steel ingots plus 2.67 plastic. 2.67 plastic is surprisingly not a problem because I have plastic going into this one. It's coming in at 10 per minute and I'm not using it for anything except just as a little stockpile. So I can take the plastic and just branch it off here and bring in the 2.67 plastic for what we need. And I can even do that for several levels as well. So what we've done is now we've reduced all this to steel pipes and uh, concrete. We've reduced this to steel pipes and concrete. We've reduced this to steel pipes and reinforced iron frames. We've reduced the iron frames into, uh, let's see here, uh, that one, reinforced iron frames. We've reduced the iron parts to be, uh, to be coming from steel ingots and plastic. And the screws can also be done. If we look at the screw recipe, we can actually use this screw recipe here and that can also be steel ingots. And then as we look at steel ingots, well, wouldn't it be natural to also go and say all the steel pipes we need could be coming from steel ingots. And that means we actually need three inputs. We need concrete, we need steel ingots, and we need a tiny bit of plastic. So the tiny bit of plastic is not a problem. We'll drag it out here and bring it up to that location by somewhere from down there. 
That means the mass the amounts we need is actually going, just going to be concrete and steel ingots. Steel ingots, we can actually build that over and on this steel facility we can make another floor over here that will be focused on making steel ingots as well so what we need to do now is start working on the design that's going to help us actually uh, get this the first thing i've marked these locations uh, if we just jump out here you can see how beautiful and aesthetic it is with our with our build it is ready for us to build four different floors here and then a ground floor where we're going to be making concrete i've even prepared it with the box inbound and we can then fly back out here no reason to fly when you can tube right so i am going to say this will be the ingots coming in and it'll go all the different floors and then end up here sweet so where do we want to build the first thing uh the first thing i think it will then be uh let's go back to inserters or there that's a good start. And what I want to do is I want to make there. That's turned the wrong way. Interesting how it's, yeah. Okay, the first thing this one is gonna get is making steel beams. Ratio is not great, but it is uh, it is what it is. And I think that will just be, this is going straight in. Let's make it here. This will then take the steel screws from the steel beams into screws. Perfect. And then from here, I will get... Yeah, this is going to get a bit tricky, isn't it? And it's placed now, I think. I think. So this will get steel ingots in here. And from there, it'll get the plastic coming in here. This will now be making... Boring iron pipes, iron belts. There. Coated plastic belts. Pipes. Uh, plates. Whatever. <laughs> and the next one. Well, we have this thing here kind of in the way. So we'll also just have to figure out how to get this in a reasonable manner. Um, yeah. Well, this has to be placed here. Yeah, is it working? It's working. And if I build... Yes. So that works. And I think that's uh, also correct because this is going to make our reinforced iron plate, just the default one, getting the iron plates and getting the screws. This will be set down to 80. Great. And that will then be split as well. Now that means this line here. Yeah, that makes sense. It is actually correct. This line. Great. Now, the next part is about placing more of these, but placing them over on the side, because now I need to make this into heavy modular frames. That's going to be the next challenge. And this is now placed. So that's one more of these built. Now we need to build the next one, and that should be easy because now we actually have them uh, aligned and I just need to go here and yeah, now I alternate between middle and edge there. All right, so let's have a look at what it is we're actually making here. This will now be making the modular frame, just the usual modular frame. No, it's not the usual modular frame. It is the steel frame. Reinforced iron plates and steel pipes. Yes, please. And we need to get up here. That one, that one, that one. Get these two out. And as usual, I don't even want them to be level. Yeah. There. So now we have the steel pipes. Uh, steel frames in here. Good. Steel frames. We get three of each. Great. That is the first challenge here. Now we are going to have to assume that we are getting... Uh, getting some ingots in here. Um, the next thing we want is for this to be uh, encased industrial pipes. Still going to be beams, but whatever. And that means we need pipes. So we're going to continue on this line back here. Here we'll have the steel ingots coming in. And I think it's then a good time for us to make a design 
for how many we want of this. Uh, this is him. One, two, three, four, five. And you're going to get Oops, these should be right next to each other. So what are we doing here? This is going to make 100 of the pipes, which is going to be enough. And it's here, 100 pipes. Yep. So our 100 pipes are going out, and I will actually gather them on this location. And just get a merger and point it towards us. And build it properly then. There. And of course, we'll just get the other ones to point towards it so that we have all of that done. And there's a reason why I don't take the outer one and I actually take this instead. There. All right. And from here, this will now go all the way over to this location where it'll be split, just normal split. It'll go in here and then it'll be split between that way which will be our manufacturer and this way, which will be our split into this area. So I will just make it there. It's one, two, three, and four. And I make one, I make 20, I need 10 plus 10. And this one needs Slightly less than 28 plus 28, so that's 56 plus 56. And there's another 20 here. This will be, this needs 7.5, but I'm building eight, so I'm just slightly overscaling it. Now, that goes in. And what we also need is then the concrete coming in at the top. One, two, three. Get an inbound and take this out. And the next one. Right. That is concrete. And concrete here. So at this point, uh, we are also regretting this. That is not going to happen. Uh, I will get... Hmm. I'll actually build it on top, because why not? It'll look better. So concrete comes in here. There. So concrete goes in, and now I have two things out here that I need to put into a new build. Well, that's going to be a manufacturer build here. That is a big manufacturer, and it has to be right there. Hmm. How far do I want to put it away? I guess we'll just do this part. And now I'm going to get a merger. And merger is here. This will merge. Yeah, okay. It definitely has to go further away. And you will also be merging towards us. So that goes here. Inbound and... Yeah. So that's obviously too close because I need to be able to get the other parts here. And let's see, that one. Maybe like this. Yeah, that could very well work. So what I need to do is I need to get from that will need to go to this location. And nope. One, two, back. And then should be perfectly aligned in. Yep, perfect. Next. One, two. And then I need to build it. One, two. From here. Uh, that's forgot to build the top one. 
and then I don't hear the sound. Do you really? No, it has to be like this. Yeah. It can't click into that one and uh, not without getting it closer. And that goes in here. And then I also need just the last bits from here. There'll be yet another merger. Uh, and another merger over on this side. And I know night has fallen, but that's okay. Right. So that goes. And inbound. Let's go up here. Just take a look. And now we have everything actually hooked up. What I'm going to do is I am going to hook up the belts. I'm going to hook up the power. I'm going to set all the recipes. This will be... Heavy module of no, not the heavy module of frame. This is actually the that one. Yes, and this will be working at eighty percent. Took a while to get that recipe, and I will then need to get it out here as well. Uh, yeah, okay, that needs to be moved just a bit. Right, so I'm going to be putting this on up, and uh, then we'll be uh, it'll also be dawn when we come back here. There we are. Now everything is hooked up. We have our four assemblers into one manufacturer. We have our weird steel beam production into screws, into reinforced iron plates, and our plastic and iron ingots into iron, into reinforced iron plates, iron reinforced iron plates into the modular frame. And then on the other side here, we have industrial beams, industrial pipes that come with concrete coming from here, and the pipes coming from that location getting in here, making it to beams and that. So you can see this is one module, just a simple module. And if I if I could just wish for one thing for Christmas, that would be a copy paste function. I don't need like full blueprint library, but if we just had the opportunity to select all this crap, press the little copy button, go down, not that one, not that one, the other one, go down here and then paste it. That would be glorious, wouldn't it? That would be so glorious. Just go down here. Paste it, boop, done. But even if I don't, then it's just easier for me at least to build it in this case modular because now I have 2.25 heavy modular frames. Well, I don't because I don't have any of the inputs. So let's get uh, the inputs uh, taken care of. Uh, we have reserved the lowest floor down here. That is reserved for concrete. So let's take a look at that. And here's our concrete build. Let's jump on in and have a look at what it looks like. Oh yeah, by the way, look at the con look at the shadow here. So apparently you have to push down with your foot in order to vent to uh, to activate the jetpack. I don't know how that works, but it it somehow works because that's the only thing. The only the only the legs cast a shadow. The rest doesn't cast a shadow. So by that definition, we know we are a vampire. Uh, I wonder how it works with the clothes of the vampire doesn't cast a shadow. Oh, never mind. Right, so I decided to make wet concrete because uh, I was pressured into it by on stream to make wet concrete. Uh, the, there is a, a, a point to it. I need 54 concrete for each of my levels. So by uh, by doing using this recipe, I need way less concrete and then I can just get a single concrete line coming in here, going in. And uh, with that single concrete line, then it's actually not a problem at all. So we'll just uh, hook that up. And then basically what I've done is I have built this concrete factory for as if I needed to support four times as much as I actually do. Uh, I don't, but uh, that's it's still fine. And the reason why this is good is because uh, concrete stacks to 500. So uh, using a manifold to distribute Concrete is, well, it takes a while for it to saturate because it needs to put 500 into each. Well, that was good. That was one thing. Let's uh, move on up to the next thing, which is what we can actually see already at this level. Here we have plastic. Funny how they are just not connected, but that's just a visual glitch. So what we have over here is right here. 
this is the plastic coming in from the original plastic factory it goes up and it gets stored and then it gets uh, thrown away into the awesome sink afterwards but i'm also now leaching off a bit on this side which will then go all the way up it can do branches i prepared it so it can do branches into each level if i feel so inclined or feel the need for it in the meantime we will just jump on up here empty and ready for next this is where we then get our steel in so let's uh, go up and find our way to the steel so we can see what the steel build looked like but it is coming in from that location and we'll be following it back here just to trace it and meantime just going all the way up here i know we i've decided that all of my tubes are going to be coming into this location so that it actually makes uh, sense and i can then go to this location this means everything has to go back here and i like it from the perspective instead of sort of trying to guess that between all of these so it is literally a hub with a hub and spoke network where all the spokes of the network that's lovely i just took damage there uh, is going from here and then we go up different floors and more floors we need to get all the way to the top and there's one more floor and this is the new floor that we've added to the steel factory. It is slightly different from the other steel factories because this one is not making beams or, or pipes. It is just making ingots. So what I've done is I have said this build is producing 120, 120 ingots. And on the other side, I, no, 180 ingots plus another 180 ingots. So this is actually enough for two levels of my build. And just nice to be ahead of the curve and get that inbound. All I need to do now to get this operational is to put in the coal and put in the iron part. And I, of course, been all the way back in upgrading all the belts and all of the and the miners as well, so that they can <coughs> uh, can support all of the uh, all of the new build we have here. And as you will be able to see, hopefully, uh, we can't even see it here because it's just going straight down. But this is the same build. If you're wondering how this 3 to 4 build is, uh, is done, then that is in my steel tutorial. It is basically this build, and then it goes into some other thing. Oh, I can't breathe up here. I need to go down. And there. So we see our steel ingots are now moving. Whoosh, slide under. Go up here. Here's our steel ingots. The first one's coming in. Great. And as we go over here, it'll now... Before it goes into the motor factory, it'll dive down into this location. And this is when I realized that I should be taking these out. Let's have a look when we get the next uh, to get the inbound. Here we go. This is the first of the steel ingots inbound. Steel ingots coming in. We're just going to ride the belt. Remember back when, when you were standing on a belt, you moved faster than the actual belt. That was silly. But it was, uh, it was just back in the old days. I don't know. I'm not going to say the good old days. Just the old days. All right. Coming up on our tower for heavy modular frames. And just need to jump up again. All the way up to get it ready up top. And then we also need to hook up the plastic that we saw that we brought in. I like these tubes. They're not hyper tubes or anything like that well they are hyper tubes but they're not as uh, they're not hyper tube cannons or anything like that but it's it's it feels more civilized to do this way now this is coming in like at a roaring speed because it's stacked up and they'll just go in here and saturate this build without too much trouble and we also see our iron our steel ingots are coming in and they'll start working on the first part the steel beams obviously i don't need to have this working this fast uh, but I'll just I'll just make it and it goes into the ink the screws that will make a silly amount of screws that will then go out here the screws will also saturate pretty quickly and uh, but we do need the iron plates why are we not having the iron plates well we are and they are coming here one two three four five six seven oh that's a lot eight in a batch nine in a batch twelve how many in a batch 18 in a batch. All right, that's a, a batch of 18. But it's all good. It gets in here. This is now working. We get the first constructors. 
uh, or first reinforced iron frames. In the meantime, we can see that we are also getting the first pipes coming in, as well as all of the concrete coming up here. Concrete is moving in, and uh, as I mentioned with the concrete, it's going to take a while for this one to saturate because it needs to go up to 500. But that's uh, not going to be a problem because we built four times as much as we need, so it'll saturate pretty damn quick. These need to be working, but the last two in the manifold are not really getting their, their share of the of the loot yet. Uh, they will get it soon. Uh, each of those consumes 30, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, okay, so that's 150 there, and then whatever else is on the other side. And there, oh, it'll also saturate really quickly because I'm actually making more than twice as oops more than twice as much uh, steel ingots as i need over on the side let's have a look are you working here yes you are working you're getting the first outbound let's have a look there we go one just one just one hmm. okay what about you you're also working good and we probably have a lot of concrete by now uh, yeah a very fair bit of concrete the encased industrial beams are slowing and also we seem to have an issue with our beams here and that's obviously because it is a uh it is a manifold and the manifold is focusing on the first ones but ultimately we will get what we need and uh, we'll we'll saturate all of it soon let's go up to this location here and uh, just get a good overview from up top there these are now working, so that's good. We will take a look at when they actually come out for the first ones here. We just want to make sure that we follow all the way through on the first build. In the meantime, well, uh, if you are enjoying these uh, design tutorials and uh, just walking, uh, moving forward with our Let's Plays, then uh, by all means, uh, make sure to hit the like button. I really appreciate it, and it really is uh, how I know whether I should stop making these videos. If there are no views and people don't like it, then I'll stop making them. And of course, if people like it, I'll continue because I like making them, but I also have to sort of consider that there has to be someone watching before it, it kind of makes sense. So thank you to everyone who is subscribing, liking, following, commenting, reading all the comments. I rarely comment on uh, or reply to comments, but I do read everything. And if there's something, I'd much rather address it during a live stream, for example, um, and just talk a bit about some of those uh, questions that come in. Um, if I reply to YouTube comments, then I basically just reply to a single person. There we go. We are getting the first modular frames inbound. And let's see if this one would happen to be switching on. Oh, man, I just got six of them and I need eight. All right. So that's going to be a bit more. Uh, what we're going to do out here is bringing that in there. Uh, so we need to get wait for another round. And once that another round is going, then we'll have enough for starting this build. And then it'll all be good. Here we have the next batch of uh, modular frames going in. And as we get that in, it all starts up. What we can see in the meantime is that uh, we are starting to stack up on some of the things, such as the steel pipes are now stacking up. That means the allocation here will now more appropriately be distributed into these lines and then should then be working, always be green, uh, because there's now no reason why they're not. Similarly, this part here is also uh, stacking up. And as that stacks up, we can, we'll get more concrete flowing into the other parts. But again, it doesn't really matter with concrete because we have plenty as it is. And over on the side, now this is only working at 80%. The reason why I did 80% is actually because otherwise I would have to overscale some of these. Now I do have the option of getting this one slightly up and then slightly upgrading these things and sort of slightly upgrading everything so that it will Okay, it's just making noise. Uh, so that it'll consume closer to 180 steel ingots, which is what we have uh, produced over there. Uh, that is an option and something I might do. But right now, I'm actually quite happy with what we have. Uh, what we're getting out here is three modular frames. So as soon as we get that, they'll just try to follow them along the way. Should be coming out anytime now. Go, go, go. There we go. There they are. And I'll see if I can go down here. Yep, I see you, I see you. There you are. But we will be following it back home to our dedicated storage unit that is... Where are they? Ah, it doesn't matter. Switch it on, and... No, not yet. 
It's coming in. It's it's supposed to be here. Are you? What happened? Oh, there they are. Yay, we got the first three. Amazing. We got three heavy modular frames. We have now completed the heavy modular frame build. And if I feel so inclined, and I, at some point and when I need to make trains or vehicles or something, and I just see that this is not going fast enough, then I'll just take a bit of time, build another level here. We know we have the, the plastic. We know we have the steel. We know they have the concrete. So all I need to do is just figure out how to build this spaghetti mess that we built up here. And uh, that's just basically how uh, how this wo works and also why I prefer to do these modular builds because, well, I have a tiny bit and if I want to double it, I can double it without actually investing. Well, I'm going to still invest twice as much time, but I don't have to uh, decide up front whether I want to make a small build, a big build, a giant build or the final build at the end. So thank you very much everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing of course, come on over to my Twitch channel. I am streaming here this on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. No, not Monday, Wednesdays, in Tuesday, Thursdays and Sundays. Look at that. If I just did this one correctly, you could see Tuesday, Thursdays and Sundays. If I could just read this, then it would be so much easier. And I will also be ma only be making a single video per week because the builds take longer time to do now and therefore I can't make uh, builds as fast as uh, on, on Twitch streams. So that's uh, gonna be the plan. I'll make one episode here on YouTube for every build that is completed so that you can follow the progress as we progress through the race. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care. And as always, stay effective.